into it. What's up, everyone? So I want to do a video that shows you all a little bit of how I look at real estate right now. <clears throat> um, right now I'm looking at self-storage, RV parks, and trailer parks. Those are my three, either a piece of real estate to develop to do it or um, a pre-existing property that is undermanaged and can get improved on. So I use this website, crexy.com or loopnet. Those are kind of the two, if I'm not working with a broker in the moment. Um, and usually I'll find brokers and I'll call them um, as I'm finding things that are interesting. So this is one <clears throat> that I've been looking at a little bit. It's called a Modco. It's, in, uh, it's pretty close to where I'm at. Um, so real estate, unlike businesses, um, goes off of NOI, which is net operating income. So net operating income is basically how profitable is the business before you're paying for your debt service um, and your hold costs, basically whatever leverage you're bringing to the property. So NOI is the equivalent of EBITDA or seller discretionary earnings if you're looking at businesses to buy instead of real estate to buy. Uh, the cap rate is basically the inverse of the exit multiple if you're looking at a piece of real estate versus a small business to buy. So a, uh, basically a 5% cap rate means that this is selling for 20 times net operating income. One divided by five gets you 25. A four cap is 25 times, a 10 cap is 10 times, an eight cap is 12 and a half times. So it's basically the inverse of an exit multiple. Uh, the pro forma net operating income is basically what this brokerage is saying. If you t strip out some expenses uh, that we don't think that you should have to pay or you increase rents because uh, rents are under market or whatever, this is what we think that the net operating income should be. And a five cap is what you're buying for. Uh, normally, I don't look at anything that's under a seven or an eight cap. It's got to be an eight cap or higher. The reason why this cap rate is lower here is because there is 10 acres available on this site. And, and so it's underdeveloped. You're also buying a lot of land. And this brokerage is wanting you to kind of pay for at least the dirt, even though it's not showing up in the net operating income. There's still, there's still value there. Um, another thing that I do as I look at listings is I am on Google Earth and I am trying to get a sense for how big the parcel is, what's happening around the parcel, um, what's going on. Before I drive out there, this is about an hour away from where I'm at. So uh, when I pulled up on Google Earth, I realized that there is this power line that runs straight through. The 10 acres that's basically made up is here. There's an offering memorandum, but you're supposed to sign an NDA, so I'm not gonna pull that up since you haven't signed an NDA. Um, so one question that I have for the broker is, what's the deal with this power line? Um, is it buildable underneath? Usually when there's a power line, I've had a piece of property that's had a power line through it. And so you, uh, at least the property that I had, there's it's called a joint use agreement that is promulgated between the power company and the real estate owner and they kind of just decide uh, what is permitted and what's not permitted in their power line. They have an easement. So they have, they have a use right to this, to this piece of real estate. So one question for the broker is, yeah, there's 10 acres and this cap rate is pretty hot, pretty low. It's pretty expensive, but um, what can be done in, in this power line area and what are the setbacks? A setback is basically an area within the power line that you're not allowed to do anything. A lot of times it's like 50 feet and these are big, but these aren't like your normal telephone pole, you know, wood power lines. These are big industrial metal power lines taking up a big swath of the property. Um, and so that's a big question is what's 
permitted here. You may be able to do an RV park here or at least be able to do more storage. From my experience with power line, power lines running through a property and trying to get something developed, um, they usually don't let you do anything set. You're not allowed to like uh, affix anything to the ground. So they probably won't let you do any more fixed buildings, but maybe an RV park where you're pouring slab and um, putting a septic tank in, maybe that's a possible use here. And then the other question is how much of the setback off of this power line goes to these trees. So you have a power line issue here for sure uh, that's got to get addressed in some way. Um, this property has been on the market for 250 days and they just made an update in the past day. Um, so this would be a good example of a property that I would talk to this broker about uh, what's possible from a seller financing standpoint. It's mom and pop. Uh, they're selling it. So mom and pop is good because it means it's probably not managed uh, perfectly. In the description, it says that there's some, um, some security cameras that are set up and there's a gate around it, um, I bet. Nor normally what I'll do when I find a listing like this is I'll call the number that's on this signage and see who's answering this. Is this an on-site manager? Is this a maintenance person? Is this the owner? Because uh, if the owner is answering this and they're billing expenses through a general manager in the net operating income, then it means that uh, they're taking their they're juicing the net operating income because the owner probably isn't getting paid for this. And I don't want to answer calls and get storage units filled. Um, so I would put in a operational expense and uh, discount the net operating income that they're bringing to the table. Um, and then you look at the units when they were built, these all look fine. I mean, color wise, they're kind of ugly, but, uh, whatever, uh, this power line, this is the power line that is the issue. The property kind of comes and it goes to this whole road, but that power line just takes out a ton. So I want to know what the joint use, what the joint use issues are. They're selling this on a per unit basis. They're, you know, 10 grand a unit. But a lot of these are covered RV stalls and 10 grand is um, pretty expensive for uh, this area, which is kind of out in the boonies. Um, so I want to know how they've done through Corona. They have a keypad, so that's something. I want to know if, whether they have video cameras there. They've, it's all gravel, which means that there's probably not a competitor in the area um, cause if you're trying to go head to head with a public storage or something and you're coming with a product of a gravel road, then, uh, you're going to have a hard time making it work. If it rains, this all gets muddy and it all goes to crap. So, you know, that's part of, part of the issue. My sense is outside of talking to the broker and a big seller financing piece and that 10 acres not being able to be expanded upon for, with development and add more units, um, my sense is this is overpriced. Um, and then the, the other piece of it that I like to do that's in the offering memorandum that I won't show you is basically how many people are within a five square square mile or three square. And this, since it's kind of rural, this would be five square miles. Um, and then I take that number, I see how many storage units are in the area. And the kind of the general rule of thumb is you only want, um, you can, you can have about eight, eight square feet of storage for every person. So if there's 2000 people in this area, then technically, uh, you could have, um, you could have 16, 16,000 square feet of, uh, 16,000 square feet of storage in the area that should be able to get absorbed. So if I wanted to move forward on this, I would call this number first, see who's answering it, see how the management process goes, and then call the storage units around the area and get a sense for uh, how booked up they are. Um, so that's, that's the process that I normally follow and looking at RV trailer park and uh, storage unit facilities. If you have one that you think would be a good one, let me know and uh, I'll check it out. Let me know 
uh, if that answers any questions you got. Peace.